기어타임스 네, 버즈비TV의 고품격 악기 버라이어티 기어타임스 지금 시작하겠습니다. 네, 오늘 굉장히 보기 힘든 정말 대단한 게스트들을 스튜디오에 모셨습니다. 우리 have great guests today and it's great honor to have you guys here and pro great guitarist and Anderton's hero. r o b e r m a s a d and his engineer and a top critic of him. Top critic. Yeah, yeah, critic yeah definitely. Of him. Yeah, Max. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely a top critic. And say hello to say hello to Korean fans and introduce yourself to okay. subscribers of this channel. Hello, I am Rabia m a s a d I'm a guitarist from the UK. Hello, everyone out here in South Korea. It's awesome to be here. However jet lagged I might look, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, we're really happy to be here. We're, we're hanging out here today, messing around with the Quad Cortex. I'm going to show you some of my presets and maybe have a little noodle on the old six string, you know. Yeah. Uh, I'm Max. I'm head of artist relations at Noodle DSP and uh, Rubia's top critic. Um, <laughs> and yeah, we're going to take you through some functionalities, some cool presets, and uh, yeah, show you what Quad Cortex is like. Okay. And what brings you to Korea? Uh, I think mainly. Um, Since Quad Cortex released, uh, we haven't had the opportunity to, well, Neural DSP haven't had the opportunity to come to the Far East to show everybody yeah. like we are now because of obviously the pandemic mm. and things like that. So it's nice that that's you know, cleared up now so we can actually come out and do this. Mm. That's the main reason, I believe. Okay. Could be wrong, Max, am I wrong? Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> Close ah, enough. You, you did good. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is this the first time you've ever been to Korea? This is my second time. Second time? Yes. So what was the first time? So the guitar brand I used to res represent m manufactured their guitars at World Musical Instruments in South Korea. Mm. So I went to visit them last time um, mm. and hang out there for a, a week or so. So I maybe, I want to say 2017 maybe, something mm. like that. 17. I think so. Oh, yeah. It's a long time ago. Mm. But I had a great time, so it's good to be back. Ah. And I, I know the area a tiny bit because we stayed around here. So mm. it felt nice to come back and be like, I remember this. Mm. You know. And you remember any tourist attractions of Korea? Yeah, I think my favorite would have been, uh, forgive me if I'm not saying what the right th word would be, it was, like it was like this temple, like... Um, temple Gyeongbokgung or something. Yeah, and it had this huge statue huge in this big statue. courtyard. Yeah. It was this big temple everyone would visit, mm. and it was amazing. It was right in the, in the center, in the city. It's not mm, very yeah. far away. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you saw the Isunshin-sang, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Yeah, really, really like that. Mm. Yeah. And what about the foods? Great. Food. We had Korean barbecue last hey, night. Korean barbecue <laughs> last night. Yeah. And had some soju or something? We did. Yeah. We did. <laughs> yeah. It was and awesome. uh, wha what is your favorite Korean food? Favorite Korean food? Yeah. Kimchi. Kimchi. Yep. Yeah. Kimchi and Korean barbecue and soju. Yeah. Dolso bibimbap is... Bibimbap. Yeah, 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 <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's great to hear from you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm. Let's talk about this Code Cortex. And what's the reason you choose Code Cortex for the first time? Well... Uh, there's a few reasons, to be honest. I think, firstly, my interest was sparked purely because good friends of mine are involved in the brand. Mm. Um, so that was the original interest there, to be like, oh, I'll, I'll check it out. I'm also playing in a band that requires me to use technology like this, mm. um, which is a band called Frog Leap. We, do, we play a lot of big shows where I need to use something small and fly it in, and I'm on in-ear monitors the whole time, so it has to be... All in house, no amps, no pedals, you know, just one thing. Mm. So when they released, when I knew this was coming out, I thought I'll try this because I was originally using a Line 6 Helix. And when they sent me this to try out, the main reason that I enjoyed it firstly was just the feel. Feel. Because it feels like um, when you dig into a note, it feels like you can feel the cabinet, mm. like the thump of a cabinet, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> It has a thickness. The wrong sound. But um, I felt like there was a weight behind all the notes and that felt natural like an amplifier would, if you know what I mean. So yep. I think that was really impressive. And also we'd already had lots of the plugins by that point. Mm. So I kind of knew that the tones that they could get were mm. really good. Yep. So it was, j it, was more a case of, um, it was more a case of just seeing if it was going to work for the gig specifically mm. because we use a lot of different tunings and I had to make sure that 
that was p- ke- uh, possible in QC, yeah. which with the pitch shifter I- I- is the case. Mm. So after that, uh, and the fact you can capture your own amps. Mm. I could go home and capture my Soldano, my Victory, my Marshall, yeah. and build a preset out of my tone, mm. which is amazing, and pedals, you know. Mm. So I just captured all my favorite things, built a sound that I know in, a, in the analog world, but in there, and just had a listen and was like, yeah, this is cool. This is, I like it, you know. Yeah. At the end of the day, it has to sound good, feel good, so, and it does. Do you yeah, remember yeah. the first gig you played with it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The first gig I played with that was uh, the, the probably the biggest gig I, I've ever played. It was uh, at Reading Festival for an artist called Stormzy. Mm. Um, he's probably one of the biggest artist in the UK mm. so the first time I ever tried this live is in front of a hundred thousand people yeah <laughs> I was pretty scared you know and it's all being run on uh, on um, it was being switched by itself no. off stage mm. so I'm on my own on stage and I have to be like it's gonna change it will change on time mm. yeah so it was a great and it and it did it it handled it and everybody mm. said it sounded great mm. and so for me that's mm. all I need to hear and can I ask, before the cold cortex, what gear did you use? In the digital world? Yeah. Um, not multi So I, I've not really been a big fan of digital stuff mm. up until the last couple of years mm. outside of the plugins. I'm talking like, I've always loved amps. I love turning uh, the gain. Yeah. You know, I love dialing in the pedals. I used to use Strymon, uh. delays, reverb stuff. Whereas uh, with the digital stuff, I really only used the Line 6 because that was the technology that did the job. Mm. I'd so I just kind of had to use it. Whereas with this, it's kind of like, I'm able to do the things I need to do with it mm. and get the sound that I like and I know. So mm. I was using the Line 6 before that. No, I understand why you love this. I agree that that cabinet thing. Yeah, yeah cabinet feeling. It's, yeah. it's like analog. Yeah, it's natural. It's, yeah. yeah, there's a response to it that mm. everybody I've showed it to and plays f- agrees on that thing particularly, mm. which a lot of digital stuff doesn't do as well in my opinion. Mm, okay. Show us some tones you made, the best tones, and okay. yeah, let Sweet. me hear well, some sounds and explain the technical explaining from Max. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> should we try a frog leap one to show you all the pitching? Oh, do you need it to be on? Oh, I do. Killing and Jumby. So these are, um, this is a preset that I made for the frog leap band. Mm. So these are this is we play covers in that band. Yeah. yeah so for example, oh, j- zombie, zombie, the s- zombie the s- main. Uh, yeah, yeah, the reverse. zombie. So th- we put it in scene mode, and Max will explain more. But mm. it means I can have all my song sections mapped mm. out. Yeah. But we use pitch shifting, so it's a great example. So this would be the main tone. <laughs> That's a soldano and a victory together, mm. and it's been EQ'd a lot for the purpose of the live sound, if that makes sense. Yeah. But I'm actually tuned to... Oh, aha. But then if I go... And then I could even go... And it adds my ambience. It's like the verse sound that I use. Mm. So that's a tone that I designed for the for the band. Um, I guess I could show you really quickly, and then we'll go back to this one so Max can explain. Um, so this is a preset that I made ages ago when it first came out Mm. and I was trying to recreate one of my favorite combinations of sounds from my Strymon pedals so like I had one sound in the delay one sound in the reverb and I tried to recreate it in here so it uses delays and pitch shifters to create a cascading like octave shimmer effect so if I So How can I make this kind of sound? It's a good one to go into, actually, technically. <laughs> um, technically, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, if we look, so the easy way to tell what's going on in 
quad cortex is that signal flows from left to right. Yep. So we start here at the input mm -hmm. and then we go from left to right. So what's happening here is we're going through a compressor, then an amp, and then to this delay, which is then going into this pitch. Mm. So this is pitch shifting up mm. uh, by an octave, and then we're delaying that octave shift. So if we took that off and be a place. So now it's just delaying normally if we add this. Yeah. Here is added. Yeah. And then we're just we're repeating the same again below here. So we're running straight through out of this, back down at the bottom here, and a reverb, and then one of them has been pitched again, mm. and this is uh, being pitched up by two octaves. So if we turn off the pitch, nothing. Oh, it's going to universe. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Mm, it's really good to hear from you technically yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so like they, these are like sounds you would find in um delay pedals that you can you know buy separately mm. and they're usually just combinations of effects like this mm. so where you might not find the exact same effect as you know it you can build it from different blocks so yeah. that's what we've done here mm. okay another great tones yeah th this preset is for the song just cause that i performed earlier mm. um i wrote this on a baritone so and I w didn't want to bring more than one guitar on this trip because, mm. well, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it shows off the pitch shifter if I bring one guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And secondly, um, it's less scary for me to bring lots of gear. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I think I would have had a harder time getting this on the plane if there was a bigger case. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, I figured I one is safe. <laughs> so it sounds, so I'm currently in C sharp. Oh, like this. So if I, I'll turn the pitch off. Yeah, so this is where I'm at. <laughs> And you turn it on. Now I'm in the baritone. Yeah. It's That's amazing, the pitch shift thing. Yeah. It's, it's really great. good. Yeah. It's because great. I thought it was basically used for like an octave. Oh. And when I first got QC, I used it as an octave pedal. Because mm. you can just pitch down where you want. But then when we tried to do it for the frog leap thing and you were like, put it at the very start of the chain. Mm. So the DI signal hits the pitch shifter first mm. and it's not gonna have any, it's gonna have way less artifacts and weird sounds yeah. if it's the first thing. And that's when it, the, the penny dropped. I'm mm. like, oh, I could do that and use scenes to change the tuning wherever I want. So yeah, yeah this preset is good for that. And then I have a lead as well, so. So I can be in baritone for riffs and then back to C sharp uh, for, or C for lead. So it's nice, you get to use your own string gauge you're comfortable with. Yeah, it's really great. The pitch shifting is, uh, I, I, I worried about that the natural feeling of the pitch shifting, but it is really natural when you bend the, the strings. You know. mm. Yeah, yeah. It, does, it doesn't make any problems. Mm. No, and you can use it on a clean tone as well. You can play chords with it, mm. you could do, well, it just works how you want it to. Mm. So, yeah. And tell us about that pitch shift, how we pitch shift, memorize the pitch shifting thing. So yeah, yeah, so what we're doing is we're using scene mode. So quad cortex operates in three different modes, actually four now. Um, so you have preset mode where you, when the each foot switch mm. changes different presets. Yeah. Um, and then we have scene mode. So if you think of a preset as being like an old fashioned like rig. So you would have your, your amplifier, you would have your pedal board set up in a specific way and you wouldn't really be able to change that a lot. Presets are kind of the same thing. And then scenes are different combinations. So if you think of an old pedal board where you know you might have a distortion on one point and the delay and the amp settings on a different channel, mm -hmm. you can do the exact same thing mm -hmm. within Quad Cortex. So scene mode just changes any parameter or disengages or re-engages any, any block that you have loaded in a preset. Mm -hmm. And so doing that, we've what we've done here is we've scene assigned. So if we go into the pitch, you mm -hmm. see that this, this, uh, mm -hmm. this icon means that this, this control has been scene assigned. And if we mm -hmm. switch between scene E and oh. scene F, it's moving. So we could do, we could change that however we like so that, mm. you know, in the middle of a song, a Frog Leap's a great example yeah. where like the intro might be in the natural tuning of the guitar and then there'll be a chorus that's mm. like pitched two down and then there might be like a breakdown mm. at the end which is like an octave or even more further down. Um, so instead of having to run and change song, yeah. change guitar mid-verse mm. or like yeah. do anything like that, 
this is a, a really good way around it. Mm. So we could show that off actually if we if we turn them if we turn it on for these two, and then on this one, let's say we want to go down a whole octave, yep. and then on this one, let's say we want to go up a whole octave. <laughs> so if we start here and move across, you'll hear what happens. <laughs> So you can just by doing scenes, you can j one push of a button. Yeah, it's not just for one thing. That could be ten different settings that yeah. change all at the same time. Mm. Yeah. So any parameter in any block can be seen assigned, and we, we can also assign things like uh, panning, levels, EQ, all of that. Um, so from one scene to another, you can change numerous different things. In fact, actually, if we look at um, there was a preset we built. Uh, yesterday as part of our clinic so this is a factory preset oh sorry so this is a factory preset um, it's called one amp does it all, <laughs> one and, amp I, does it all. and I like showing this because uh, it really does it covers a lot of ground so it starts from this kind of sound which is just like a slight crunch mm. you know a little bit of reverb and then we add crunch and delay and then now with a boost and then medium gain. And then a big lead tone. And, and if we do that outside of gig view, and I'll show you what's going on here, we're not changing presets at all. We're just yeah. engaging, disengaging different mm. blocks, and we're changing multiple parameters all mm. at once. So, you know, this is something you couldn't do with a, like a standard pedal board. You would have to have, mm. number one, a very odd shaped foot mm. to be able to push multiple pedals yeah. at a time and also twist knobs and mm. change things. And yeah, it's, it's uh, once you kind of get the concept of it, it becomes really powerful, really fast. Mm. I think it's important for to, to add to that, um, that type of, ability is on other products that I've tried harder to do making scenes or whatever they're called on other products whereas on this it's very easy which I think is another reason I, I going back to your other question why I like using this mm. it's almost like it has a built-in iPad to, yeah. to use and for people where well we all like smartphones we all like iPads yeah so we're used to it now and I think for me to go I wonder if I could do this oh yeah I can just because it's intuitive mm. So I really, uh, really like how easy it is to make scenes. Yeah, I love this big screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the point should be that, you know, playing around with tones and tweaking things and doing stuff, that's that's kind of a hobby in and of itself. But mm. if you're just trying to play guitar, trying to write a song or trying to play a gig, you don't want to spend hours and hours and hours having to tweak stuff. You want to just be able to get your idea out as fast as you can. Yeah. And so, you know, Quad Cortex is intuitive for that reason mm. so that you can just spend more time being a musician spend more mm. time playing in a band spend more time writing music yeah. rather than turning knobs and trying to figure out crossovers and stuff mm. this is how you use core cortex i guess uh, i've been i have this one and i've been using 10 percent of this really uh, <laughs> 100 percent, i guess i think it's when you come to the like because we had a, a very specific gig it forced me in to learn loads about it yeah. and of course some of my best friends work at the company, mm. including Matt. Mm. He knows everything about how to use it. Yeah, everything. So, uh, and he lives <laughs> like 10 minutes from my house. Mm. So if it's ever like, Max, I need your help. <laughs> like, oh, go over. Oh, this is great. <laughs> yeah. I want to have Max. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We all need a Max. Yeah, we all need Max. Top yeah. critic. Top <laughs> critic, yeah. <laughs>